Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn your King James Bibles to the 45th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 45. Just a quick little bit of background. Uh, Cyrus who was of the Medes and Persians, allowed Judah, that was taken into captivity, to uh, allow them to escape the Babylonian captivity when Persia conquered Babylon, and allowed Judah to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the city and the temple. And it was Cyrus. They call him Cyrus the Great. All right, let's go read verse 1. Oh, and this uh, Bible study is going to be in reference to the recent L.A. earthquake. Now, there was a, uh, somebody wrote, oh, I don't know, he had a vision of California being destroyed. And um, I don't remember where it's at, but you know, when I read uh, when I read about it, I looked at it and he didn't tell anybody about this for many years. And uh, I mean, America was somewhat of a godly country when the, all this had happened and he was looking at things and he didn't recognize it. He knew it was the future. And then he noticed that uh, women are walking around in mini skirts and dressed like whores and saw things. But it wasn't until the, about the, I think he wrote this in like the 30s or in the 40s. And then in the 60s, he wrote down what he thought was a vision and a prophecy. And he was kind of afraid to tell anybody. But, uh, you know, the 60s is when the miniskirts and all that stuff started coming into vogue, I guess you could say. You know, uh, back in the 40s and the 50s, women wore scarves over their head as a head covering. I mean, America was a totally different country back then. But by the late 60s, uh, you had the hippies and... I don't know. So is California going to be destroyed in a prophecy by somebody? Wouldn't surprise me. I mean, if you looked at my last study, um, I guess you could call this a whole lot of shaking going on, but this is a continuation, I guess you could say, of the previous study of mocking God. All right, Isaiah 45, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him. Oh yeah, the Persians destroyed Babylon. And I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaved gates, that the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked paths, I'm sorry, the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunders, uh, and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that thou may knowest that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Now some people will try to tell you that Isaiah was written after Cyrus. But uh, there's a legend that the children of Judah showed Cyrus the, uh, this prophecy when he took Babylon. But uh, I believe this is prophecy prior. But what can I tell you? I think this was written before Cyrus. Verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, 
I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, thou, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Listen carefully. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop down, ye heavens from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open. And let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Let the potsherd strive with the pot potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou, or thy work? He hath no hands. Woe unto him! that saith unto his father, What begattest thou? Or to the woman, What hast thou brought forth? Thus saith the Lord, The Holy One of Israel and his Maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my, of my hands. Command ye me. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I even my hands have stretched out the heavens, and all their host have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city, and he shall let go my captives. Not for price nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabaeans, men of stature, shall come over to thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee, in chains shall they come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. Verily thou art a God, that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed and also confounded, all of them. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. How long is everlasting? Forever, people. How long is salvation? Forever. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded world without end. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret, in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain? I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray Pray unto a God that cannot save. Isn't that what all the heathen nations do? They pray to gods that cannot save. India is full of hundreds of thousands of gods that cannot save. Verse 21. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none 
beside me. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself. Can you imagine that when you swear to God? I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely one day, I'm sorry, surely shall one say, in the Lord have I righteousness and strength. That's right, in the Lord have I righteousness and and strength. Even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified, and shall glory. Now, the point being is, if there's an earthquake, it's because the Lord wants there to be an earthquake. All right, let's go to Job chapter 9, verse 1. Then Job answered and said, I know it is so of a truth, but how should man be just with God? You see, some people say that Job is the oldest book in the Bible, and I wouldn't be surprised. I actually believe it is, but uh, Job asks, but how should man be just with God? Well, he didn't know, but it was in Christ. Verse 3. But how should a man be just with God if he will contend with him? He cannot answer him one of a thousand. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered? That's right. How can you harden yourself against the Lord God and prosper? You can't. Who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered, which removeth the mountains, and they know not, which overturneth them in his anger, which shaketh the earth out of her place. Isn't that what's happening in California? Which shaketh the earth out of her place, and the pillars thereof tremble, which commandeth the sun, and it riseth not, and sealeth up the stars, which alone spreadeth out the heavens, and treadeth upon the waters, and treadeth upon the waves of the sea. All right, let's take a look at Psalms 18. A Psalm of David the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me and the floods and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. See, people, that's the only time a lot of people will never call upon the Lord except for when they're in distress. When trouble comes knocking, they cry out to the Lord. When they're fat and happy, they forget all about him. Actually, it ought to be the opposite. When the Lord gives you a, a, a blessings, you ought to be happy and praise him. Maybe the distress will never come. But... If you don't praise him in the good times, he'll send bad times. Verse 6, In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, 
and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. Oh, yeah. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. He was angry, people. He was because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth, devoured. And fire out of his mouth, devoured. Yeah, people, God promised he would never send another flood of, of water upon the earth. This time there's going to be fire. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth, devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. All right, I think, hopefully you're getting the idea here. The Lord shakes the earth. All right, everybody, turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 2. Uh, this looks, this is starting to look like it's going to be a long series. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Isaiah chapter 2, I guess, start at the beginning, right? Oh, I always tell everybody, there's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. Well, guess what? We're going to see some prophecy right here. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah... And Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days. See, this is telling you, this is for the future. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now, if this is future, it's saying, uh, For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Don't you just uh, wonder where these preachers always say, oh, the law was nailed to the cross. There's no more law. But right here it says, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Let you know a little secret. Every kingdom has a king and every king and kingdom has laws. It's just... That's just the way it works, people. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Now, has this ever happened? People I tell you that uh, all the stuff in the Bible is past when did when did ever when did we ever in the history of the world ever beat swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks? Uh, never. This is future people. This is when Christ returns in glory. So, all right, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nations; neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east and are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Now, the Philistines. Who is the most famous Philistine in the Bible? Goliath. 
Their land also is full of silver and gold, neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses, neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that, that which their own fingers have made. And the mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself. Therefore forgive them not. Enter into the rock, and hide thee in the dust, for fear the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of man shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts, the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and everyone that is lifted up, he shall be brought low. And upon the, all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks. Who is going to go into the holes of the rocks? The wicked, those that rejected Christ. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. When he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. That's right. There's going to be a whole lot of shaking going on. Now, keep this in mind. They're going to go into the holes of the rocks, caves of the earth, for fear of the Lord when he shakes the earth. Think about that, because we're going to go to Revelation, and you're going to see where this ties into Revelation. In that day shall a man cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made, each one for himself to worship, to the moles. And what do moles do? Moles dig holes in the ground. And to the bats. And where do bats hang out? The cave. And we ain't talking about Batman. To go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the jagged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. When he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell under the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Boy, that's going to be some earthquake, huh? Verse 15, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondsman, and every free man hid themselves. They're going to be in hiding. Hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Oh yeah, you ought to read about all the rich people, like, like people like Bill Gates building underground bunkers. Why? 
hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who, who shall be able to stand? Well, guess what, people? Is there another witness to this? When Luke, uh, in the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 28, when Jesus was being led to be crucified, he said, But Jer Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. You see, people, there's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. All right, let's go back to the book of Isaiah. I'm telling you, there's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. People just... Uh, it, people that tell you don't read the Old Testament because it's for the only for the Jews are idiots, or I think they're deceivers, but, you know. They can't all be deceivers, can they? Eh, maybe. All right, uh, let's see. All right, let's... Uh... Isaiah 13, may as well read the whole thing, lest people accuse me of pulling verses out of context. The burden of Babylon, Isaiah 13, 1. 13 and verse 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amoz, Amoz did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice of them, shake the hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have com commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands, therefore shall all hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, both uh, cruel, cruel, both with wrath, and fierce anger to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Wow. To lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Didn't we just read this in Revelation? Yeah, we just read this. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. 
Therefore, I will shake. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. It shall be as the chaste roe and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one into his own land. Wow. I guess we ought to stop there because uh, the rest of it has reference to uh, Babylon. So, yeah, we could, we could finish it up. Now, remember, this is talking about Babylon. Um, everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone... All right, excuse me. Verse 15. Every one of them that is found shall be thrust through. In other words, they're going to be stabbed with a sword. And every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them. The Medes were part of the Persian Empire. Um... Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows shall also dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eye shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Do you know that to this day, the, Ara the uh, Arabians, the Arabs, they don't, uh, they don't go there. According to their own legends, it's inhabited by uh, what they call jinn. I think they spell it J-I-N-N, -N, but uh, what do we call gin? G-I-N. Have you ever heard of uh, Bombay gin? Uh, liquor? G-I-N? Spirits? Yeah. Uh, let's see. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons, dragons in their pleasant places, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. But you see, people, Babylon spiritually lives on, even though the... Um, the physical Babylon was destroyed. Saddam Hussein tried to rebuild Babylon, but the Bible said it would never be rebuilt. Well, guess what happened to Saddam? Yeah, he doesn't, uh, he's not around anymore. All right, let's take a look at the book of Joel, chapter 3. I guess we'll start in... Verse 11, assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen. The United States and in Europe is full of heathens. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Have you noticed um, Bob's note here? The day of the Lord and and the earth shaking. <laughs> it, 
you know, these these two things go together a lot. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. That's right. People are going to have to make a decision. Follow the Lord or not. Verse 15. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. Didn't we read that somewhere? Oh, yeah. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. Oh, but I thought there was going to be a secret rapture. Wrong. The Lord shall roar, roar out of Zion. What does a lion do? It roars. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lord shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord, your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain of water shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the, for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion." All right, let's go to the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verse 20. And again, the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake, I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms, of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, I will take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, saith the Lord, and I will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. All right, Matthew 24. One of the end times chapters in the Bible, the words, these are the words of Christ himself. In verse Matthew 24, verse 27, it says, Jesus said, For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Do you know there's a there's going to be a lot of dead people hanging around, and in the book of Revelation it talks about the uh, the fowls that were filled with their flesh. Uh, well, I guess we'll go take a look at that. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be, wait for it, shaken. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Amen to that. Now, where's the punchline? Well, Matthew 24 ties in with Revelation chapter 19, verse 19. Revelation 19, 19. And I saw the beast. The beast has several different names. The Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. And I saw the beast 
and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So here you have the armies of the earth trying to fight the armies of the king of kings and lord of lords, the armies of heaven. It's not going to end well for them, people. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. The fowls were filled with their flesh. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 4. I have a feeling this is going to be a multi-part series. Um, my apologies if it takes sometimes several days to... Uh, finish a series, but, you know, I'm still working, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't ask for donations normally, and, uh, you know, I work, so, and I have to find a quiet time and a place, so uh, sometimes I just can't get it all done in one sitting, so, Acts chapter 4, verse 1. And as they spake unto the people, who? The apostles. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captains of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas and John and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. Um, now you got to realize they, they had just uh, healed a man that was crippled, okay? And this is what this is all about. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have ye done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, not Yeshua HaMashiach, no, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, not the Romans, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. That's right. The man that was crippled was now standing there healed. He wasn't crippled anymore. That's a miracle of God, people. Even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. That's right. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, not Yeshua HaMashiach. They don't want you saying Jesus. They don't like the name of Jesus. And it wasn't the Romans that killed Jesus. That's why they hate that name. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. 
Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, yeah, they didn't go to Bible college. They didn't go to rabbi school. No, they were unlearned and ignorant men. They had just spent years with Christ and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go, uh, to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it, but that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them. Oh, so who's the ones that don't want the apostles to speak in the name of Jesus? Take a guess. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. The chief priests, not Catholic priests. All right, so these are the priests of the temple. These are not, like I said, they're not the Catholic priests. Verse 24, And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God which hath which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus whom thou hast anointed, both Herod, Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word." by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. How many miracles have you seen rabbis, messianic rabbis doing in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach? I say zero. and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. <laughs> they're, they're praying, and the place is being shaken, people. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God, with boldness. You see, to the evil ones, the shaking is going to be bad. But to those in Christ, it's good. Don't be afraid of the, the earth shaking if you're in Christ. 
And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Wow. And if you want to read about communism, real communism, read verse 34, 35, 36, and 37 by yourself. Boy, uh, we don't have that t today. But I tell you what, it's coming. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 16. Uh, there were, uh, I don't want to read the whole chapter, but uh, basically Paul is going to cast a devil out of a woman. So let's go, and then the guy is making uh he, he's upset because he cast the devil out of this woman verse 20 and brought them to the magistrates a magistrates a judge right saying these men being jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive neither to observe being romans and the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Now, uh, the thing is, when you were a prison guard, and if a prisoner escaped, uh, <laughs> you were put to death. I mean, that's just how it, that's how it was. So, you know, you didn't think, you weren't going to, Take a bunch of gold and silver and let somebody escape because it's not going to do you any good when you're dead. So that's that's the name of that tune. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. So not only were they in the prison, they were in the innermost prison, and they, were, they had their feet chained. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. Uh, here it is, they just got beat. They had gotten beaten, and uh, they're thrown into prison, and they're singing and praising God. How many Christians today would be doing this? I don't even think I'd be doing this, but... And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great, wait for it, earthquake. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out a sword. He drew out a sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. See, it would be better to take your own life than to be tortured by the Romans. So he's getting ready to commit suicide. Harry Carey, I guess. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Hamash uh, uh, Yeshua Hamashiach? No. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were, and, and to all that were in his house. And he took them that same hour and washed their stripes 
and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them in his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Huh, how's that for a testimony, huh? All right, I think this is going to be uh, one more. Hebrews chapter 12. And then I think we're going to make this part one. I'm not even sure I'm... I don't even know if I'm halfway done. Okay, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant... And to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Oh yeah, people. Messianic Jews, they don't talk about a new covenant. They called about the renewed covenant. Oh yeah, let's go back to the law. We're going to renew the law. We're going to renew all the old things. No. That's not what new means. Okay? When you get a new car, Okay, you don't take the old car and repaint it and say, oh, this is our renewed car. No, no. When the old car is broken down, you don't replace everything. It's all busted up and rusted out. You get rid of it and you get a new one. That's a new car. The, the Messianics want to renew the old covenant. No. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, how much, uh, much more shall, shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven? Whose voice then shook the earth? Whose voice then shook the earth? But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that, that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved, let us have grace. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. All right, people, this is going to be the end of part one of a whole lot of shaking going on. Uh, I'm hoping I'm about halfway done because, you know, when I start these lessons, I'm not even sure half the time which, I mean, I've got a general idea of how where I'm going to go, but, you know, when I start doing research and finding things, I'm not always, sometimes I find things and, go off on a different trail for a while. So it's, sometimes it's not easy to figure out how long it's going to be. I and mean, sometimes I thought, eh, I'm going to do a half hour study and it ends up being a three or four parts of an hour each. So I don't know. All I know is all blessings, praise, glory and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world in Jesus' precious name. Amen.